everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from the Hive on a Thursday night. It's February 1st and this is kind of like part two of what we started off with for Ink, Paper, Scissors, the perennial lavender class. Uh, I just had to restart it um, because apparently the memory was full on the the iPad and it doesn't like that. So um, it doesn't like when the memory gets full. And so it's all right. We really have been just discussing and talking a lot of stuff. I think I'll leave that video out there in case anybody um, wants to catch up on what's happening in the world, in my world. Um, so what we need to do though is find the new video here and get everybody kind of transitioned and transferred over to this new one. Um, so we'll see once what happens um, for that. So still not helping me. I've tried twice and it keeps freezing. Um, started it over everybody. So I was mentioning that I would be starting it over. Um, started over. So let's see here. All right, let's get you guys in here. Um, we'll, we'll buy a little time for everybody. Uh, we're, we're back. A bunch of you guys are already rolling in, which is awesome. I'm gonna find the video really quick as well and see once if we can't get everybody else on board. So sorry about that, guys. Um, I just realized that Gina does her videos on my tablet and we had the Winter Creative Escape using my tablet and I've had quite a few classes using my tablet and I don't think we had cleared out the memory uh, for about six months and, um, and it got full. And that has happened. If you have been watching my lives with me for the like the last three years, uh, we usually try to stay on top of that. But apparently, I kind of uh, lost track of how many lives we're doing. So um, it's nobody else, everybody. So you just need to click on the new video um, that is going. And I'll have to figure out how I'm going to do that. So I don't know. Do you guys think I should just delete and erase the other one so it's less confusing and then keep going <laughs> or or not? I guess that's the million dollar question, right? So let's see if I can get into mine as well. Um, there you guys, a lot of you girls are rolling back in here with me. So that's good. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I get the right one live now. Okay. I think I'm live. Um, or oh, I'm watching the old one. So what's going to be slightly confusing everybody is that I created a new video and it looks just like the other one. Um, it has the same cover photo. And so hopefully we can figure this out and we'll succeed. And you know what, I'm going to leave that other video there. I might just call it something else. Um, we uh, got to show off the MS cards in the previous video. Um, continue on with the rusted out on the bottom and underneath. Yes, exactly right, Judy Immel. That's exactly where I was. I will continue. I just want to find the video here really quick too, to make sure I can get um, up to speed with you guys on your comments. So, um, so the, let's see here, you and gotta switch my Google account. There's like a certain number of clicks I have to do on mine to make it work for my video to pop up. And so let's see if this was the million dollar trick to make it happen. So, okay. So Judy said to continue on, can you title this one part two? Yes, Judy Sharp. I'll call this one part two and I will leave part one out there so that if anybody wants to catch up with it, um, you guys can. So just know in part one, we talked a little bit about where I was do what I was doing in Florida and, and basically uh, talking about the MS cards that are coming up the class. And um, it's actually not, oh, I think we're going to do it as a class too. So anybody that gets the um, kits, I think I'm going to do a YouTube video showing how to make the cards. So I think we're going to do that. So what Judy Immel said I was at was talking about like, we went up, we drove to Minneapolis. You guys, we got into Minneapolis. Um, we got to the hotel. It was about midnight or 1230 because I think we finally left here at 630 and it was around uh, one or something like that. Hi, Sherry Martin. Um, thanks for liking and sharing again, Jennifer Jones. I appreciate it. Um, so we got there uh, in the morning on Wednesday and I just didn't have the good feeling of like, yep, this is the car that is going to replace my current car. And and it just was like, mm-mm. And, and partly because I had... Um, a second car that was further away. So 
it is working now. Thanks, Deb Norman, for letting me know it's working now. Um, the There were two vehicles always in question. One was in Minneapolis and one was in Kansas City. <laughs> and uh, this all started since last Friday, you guys. I'm sitting in Miami uh, helping my friend, and my friend Adam is sending me links to cars that he knows what I'm looking for. And so he helped find two of them, one in Kansas and one in Minneapolis. So then Wednesday, instead of getting the one in Minneapolis and driving home and continuing to do a live with you guys last night, I drove with Tyler uh, down to Lawrence, Kansas, and it's past Kansas City, and we got there at 6.30, and the dealership closes at 7, and the guy waited for us, and he stayed there with us until about 8 when we were finally all finished with everything, and it was like, yep, this is the car <laughs> that is going to replace my current car, and um, so that's perfect. Um, but then we had a nine hour drive home and Tyler drove the FJ and I drove the, I got a Toyota 4Runner, you guys. Not anything spectacular or special, it's just a Toyota 4Runner, but um, I, I'm, I'm over the FJ and onto something else and just a, a little bit, uh, a car that can be more conducive to carrying all my stamping supplies around and putting the back seats down and hauling stuff to the used stamp sales. And it just needed to be a different vehicle. And it's red, which is what my other car used to be. So, so nine o'clock last night, Tyler and I both get in the vehicles and we proceed to follow each other home. And I, I, I actually call up Deb Norman and I'm like, Deb, um, we're going to be going through Dubuque, Iowa around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. Can we crash at your house for like two and a half hours? And she's like, yes. So she left the light on for us. So Deb um, helped a girl out and her boyfriend. Uh, we, we got there at four o'clock about in the morning. It was 3.45 by the time we got there. Um, and we spent two and a half hours sleeping by Dev. And then we got on our bikes and rode again and got home by, I think we were home by 9.30 this morning. Uh, so it was a long night of driving and um, and then it was right at it <laughs> today. Um, so um, if you guys watched uh, YouTube or I mean, Facebook at all, you saw what I worked on today. I got all of the events created for every class except for Mystery Car Night for the month of February. So they're all out in Facebook now. I scheduled every email to go out over the course of the next four days. And so you're not bombarded with everything in one email or like in one day. Um, so I got all that done. Thank you, Holly. I am happy to have a new car that will meet my needs and not leave me hanging. <laughs> so uh, let's just put it like that. So um, yeah, don't forget the box to the post office, right, Nancy? Exactly. So Oh, so it was quite of a whirlwind since I left last Thursday. So a week ago, you guys, I've been to Florida. I've been to Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been to Illinois. I've been back to Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Iowa, uh, Kansas. <laughs> and I had never been to Kansas before. So Kansas was a first. Um, so yeah, so I hit my, I hit seven states in basically seven days and I'm excited to go to bed tonight in my own bed. So I am exhausted, Connie. I really am. Um, I'm going to crash tonight, Linda Hunt. You are correct. You guys, I can usually work on like adrenaline, I guess is what you could say. I don't know. I feel really bad for Tyler. Tyler had to actually go into work and he was there at 10 o'clock and he does more physical, mentally exhausting things. Uh, and so I know he's going to crash hard tonight too. Hi, Carol Lanis. Um, So, but... Yes, and it was a nice Motel 6. They, 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 yep, Deb and Ed led, left the light on for me. So um, they helped us out big time because it didn't make sense to get a hotel. Um, for two and a half hours, uh, we would have ended up sleeping in the car somewhere. And the having a bed to snuggle into, like, awesome, like, Deb's, the bed down there is, like, the most cozy, comfortable bed ever. <laughs> like, you just sink into the bed. <laughs> it was so amazing. So it was definitely a road trip. I bet the cat, yeah, the cats are glad that we're home. Um, you guys, you can see, look at this. Hunky's right. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Whoa, look at him go. Did you guys see him? He jumped. He jumped through the air. I don't know what he was after, but he leaped off the counter and like ran that way. So the cats, uh, I call them the kittens. The kittens were very happy to, to have us home. Um, but uh, they'll be really excited to sleep all of us in the same bed tonight because usually we all five sleep together. <laughs> so, oh, yes. Powell and Penny Powell was awesome too. Um, I had a really comfortable, uh, I got the whole camper to myself for two nights um, and it had all the amenities. And you guys, Penny Powell, I got to give a shout out to Penny Powell, you guys. So, Penny Powell had um, the best pillow gifts in the world that a girl could ask for you guys. Um, she had on my bed, um, let me just see where it is. She had a basket full of goodies for me. 
um, my favorite like little um, breakfast bars. She had cat treats. She had goldfish. We ate those on our way from Minneapolis down to Kansas. Chapstick, hot chocolates. She had popcorn, a little cup in there, some hand sanitizer, a little notebook. She had kitten toys. So Tigger um, got a little stuffed animal from Percy and Gwen, Guinevere, I think it's Guinevere, Gwen, um, got a little, gave a little gift to Honeybee. And then Lance gave a little monkey to Hunky. And so it was super adorable. And then Penny made me a, like a pillow gift that was actually a pillow. <laughs> um, she embroidered my name and made me a bee pillow. So when I got there, I had a mask and a pillow waiting for me. So it was so amazing, Penny. You outdid yourself, girlfriend. So I was completely astonished. I was just like smiling from ear to ear when I saw all the things you had for me. So it was amazing. Thank you so much. And then you guys, I've got to share this with you. On the way over to, um, on the way over to Minneapolis from Fond du Lac, we started to see this horizon that was purple. Like it would be perfect for a card. So here we are driving along, Tyler's driving and he's like, dear, uh, look at the sky. And I looked up and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's purple. It's really purple. It's like, and it kept getting bigger and we're like, are we gonna, like, what's going on? Like, oh, sorry, Deb, I'm putting your thing down there. What is going on? And so it got bigger and bigger. And then I, I have a video of us driving and it's in the skyline. It looked so weird. We're like, is this the Northern Lights, but they're actually purple? We couldn't figure it out. And then we got closer and like the whole sky is purple. Like, look at that. Is that not the co coolest like shot? Like there's cliffs on the side and then you've got purple, purple, more purple. And I think that's it. Oh, and that's, see, that's how rusty that one is. We were not happy with that. So, um, so yeah. So turns out <laughs> we get past where like the cliffs are like these, like they're not cliffs. We don't have cliffs here, but it opens up with the side of the road and you look back and there's a huge building and they have purple lights in around surrounding this entire building and they are illuminating the sky <laughs> and uh it was just so pretty but um yeah definitely not the northern lights though um yes hildy we all need to go visit penny <laughs> i love it um so froze again maybe she should just go to bed get some sleep and try this another day what do you mean is anybody else frozen patricia settle i don't have any other comments from anybody else saying it's frozen and i don't I don't have any error messages. So I don't think it's frozen. I'm not going to bed, you guys. Don't, you can, nobody can tell me I'm going to bed. We're getting through the live. Um, and now we're getting through it. We're going to have an amazing class. Um, we have ink, paper, scissors that we're going to do. And then, so you guys, just, you know, tomorrow night at like five, we're going to do the garden and meadow uh, stamp a stack class. So I wanted to leave the ink, paper, scissors. What I was trying, you bet it was a greenhouse. Oh, that could be it, Nancy, definitely. Um, I wanted to leave the ink, paper, scissors because you guys, we have like a hundred and some people signed up for this class. I wanted to leave the ink, paper, scissors during a normal time at 6 p.m., which was tonight. And then I moved the stamp stack, which has maybe about 40 or so people. I have that moved to tomorrow. So um, it was moving the stamp stack time to a different time. So everybody else is good. So Patricia Saddle, I don't know why you're frozen, but maybe go out and come back in. I also did want to say, you guys, the scavenger hunts were due on the 31st to be in the mail to me. Um, you've got some time. We're going to let the mail system get everything to us. But I did want to let like Judy Bobo, Jean Maxwell, Susan Bellamy, and um, Jenny Knutson, your four were waiting in the mail for me when I got home. Um, if you emailed it to me, uh, I sent it off to my printer. Uh, Connie Moore, I know I have yours here. And if anybody else, I know Feline, you emailed yours. Somebody else emailed, I sent them off to my printer and I'll get them back. And if you sent it to me previously, we're already grading them. So you guys, I wanted to remind you, Kelly did the paper pumpkin last week. I think the cards are gorgeous. They are amazing and pretty. This perennial lavender, Stampin' Up! really did a great job um, knocking that one out of the ballpark with the ink, paper, scissors. I don't have any left. Uh, in case anybody's wondering, I got... I got a few people covered for this month. Um, I know we got Laura Sullivan, Connie Piasaki. I got to look at your Piasaki. Piasaki maybe, Connie? I think that's, if I say it really fast, maybe Piasaki. Um, and then Cheryl Gremlich. The three of you were the last three that um, got my last three paper pumpkins. So if anybody else reached out to me, um, I don't have any left. So, um, oh, okay, Patricia, I'm glad that you're good to go. All right. So you guys, I did take a small baby nap at like four o'clock until five o'clock. 
So I knew I needed to take a nap before the live. Otherwise, I might be really tired, but that little nap did me good. My mom told me I needed to take a nap and I listened to her, right? Listen to mom, right? So you guys, you can see the board behind me. I just want to call out. It's full. Board number six is full. Um, hi, everybody that's coming in. <laughs> Debbie, okay, Debbie, you mailed yours on the 30th. So I'll wait for it and make sure I grade it um, and get in it. I'm not going to plan to do the um, scavenger hunt uh, reveal until I have everything in and graded. So you guys, we're going to do a drawing for this. And I will be happy to let you know that while I was in Florida, um, I worked on getting caught up on a few things. We got the December mystery card night names. Pull, I should say I pulled. I pulled the mystery card night names. I pulled January mystery card night names. I pulled the January share, create, inspire names. I pulled the December VIP list, the January VIP list. I have the January class card challenge. And I have the... Um, the, mm, the monthly class challenge, the monthly creative challenge. So you guys, I have a whole sheet here of names for drawings. And on top of it, Kelly didn't do the paper pumpkin drawing from last week. So we're going to do that. So you guys, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to be doing a drawing for lots of things, uh, to get caught up on that. So we're getting caught up on the January things, one December thing. And then we're going to be doing, uh, like stuff that's current. So yay, good stuff. All right. So let's do roll call really quick and see where we're at with people. Now, if I don't call your name and you don't hear it, right? So sometimes you might miss hearing it too, but if you don't hear your name, I'll try to go slow. I do request that you reach out to me after class and check with me. Um, it is very possible if you've emailed me in the last week that I might not have caught that you wanted the class and I do have kits available. So you don't have to worry that you have missed out if I missed your name. Hi Janice Ormiston, I'm watching and driving home from work, perfect. Um, so I have about four unaccounted for, but they are being held specifically for people who I may have missed logging on my, my sheets here um, until I can get through uh, solidly on the rest of my emails. So again, if you don't hear your name, and you have emailed me, you are welcome to email me again, cause like me to see it, bring visibility to the making sure I save one for you before I give it to somebody else. All right, so we're gonna go through the names, you guys, be patient. I like to say a big shout out and thank you to everybody who does a class with me. The reason that you guys are all watching this class for free is because people do sign up and take um, do register for class and get the kits. And I have always made a decision that I'm going to share the cards and inspiration and creativity with everybody who wants to watch it, not just in a private group with people um, that specifically signed up for the class. So I am calling these people out because I want to say thank you to them. Um, they are supporting me in my business um, with this by taking this class. All right. So we have Jenna Helms, Donna Grushke, Sandy Wicklander, Sherry Everett, Karen Woods, Shirley Malarkey, Karen Wettstein, Pat Fleming, Francis Rodriguez, Nedra Dover, Vicki Rodriguez, Angelique McClendon, Jeannie Parker, Pamela Leahy, Pat Thomas. Now, Pat Thomas, if you're watching, I did email you the PDF tutorial four times. <laughs> Two to each of the email addresses I have on file for you, and both times for each of them, they bounce back. I don't know how to get it to you, okay? So if you ask me where the tutorial is, I'm going to say I sent it to you twice. <laughs> Four times, actually. All right. Sharon Land, Suzanne Neal, Gwen Petrashek, Jan Wampach, Carolyn Ketchmark, Barbara Rudolph, Janice Ormiston, Judy Sharp, Holly Paplow, Jennifer Jones, Deanna Stell, Teresa Lavalley, Karen Mikowski, Leslie McMinn, Mary Lemke, Debbie Guest, Karen Stagg, Mary Jo Stoll, Susan Bellamy, Feline Mays, Kate Race, Julie Biersbach, Annette Rollin, Cheryl Thomas, Brenda Cottrell, Darrell Hoffaker, Faye Godby, Patty Wright, Christina Bernards, Lynn Beasley, Joanne Kahn, Laura Sullivan. I'm going to say your name again. Laura Sullivan, just in case you don't hear it, Laura. <laughs> Ruth Nicholson, Lisa LaFramboise, Nancy. I should say fancy Nancy Billets. I should write fancy in front of your name, Nancy, so I always remember to say it. All right, then you guys, you're gonna laugh because it's Linda Scott and then it's always Linda Hunt right after, or it's always one right after the other one. <laughs> My Lindas. Uh, Carmen Melendez, Marsha Dean, Susan Rich, Connie Moore, Becky Gandolfo, Mary Carls, Pat Mater, Barbara Godby, Latokia Trigg, Jenny Knutson, 
Angela Knutson. <laughs> you, you girls too. I have Jenny Knutson with a T and then Angela Knutson with a D. <laughs> and you guys signed up. I had you right in a row. Uh, Janet Prue, Susan Ray Hendricks, Trisha Flagley, Patricia Settle, Sharon Davis, Phyllis Oderman, Lori P., Sheila Roberts, Kathy Dolly Nagari, Kat Birch, Chris Niebaum, Lori Baxter, Donna Winter, Beth Vickery. This is one of Beth's very first classes. Yay. Marilyn Edens, Mary Jo McCulloch, Melody Miller, Barbara Tyler, one of Barbara's first classes. I think she's had one already, but this is her, like, where I can say her name. Um, Ellen Brover, Deb Norman, Sherry Stewart, Terry Coston, Linda Hodge, Patty Taylor, Chris Robinson. I think this is Chris's first class. Carmen Sanders, Lila Erickson, Gwen Simmons, Sue Spigner, Cheryl Gramlich, Kathleen Ketterman. This is Kathleen's first class. Susan Warmly, Dee Camelotto, Wendy Ellison, Patsy Roberts, and Shelly Cooper. And it's one of Shelly's very first classes where I had her on the list on the front end. So I do technically have five spots that I don't have names. And again, if I didn't call your name, please reply with an email or a text or a phone call. Um, <laughs> let me know if I need to make sure I get you on the list. Even if you've sent me an email like three days ago or four days, or even if it was a month ago. If I, if you think you're supposed to be signed up for this class, I do not um, hesitate to tell you, let me, I want to make sure I don't accidentally give out this class to somebody that signed up for it after you. Okay. It has been a little bit of a struggle bus with keeping up with the emails for the last week. So I am going to just say that. So you guys, huge, lots, lots of people took this class. So at the end, we'll do a little uh, drawing for probably two people for a door prize for this class. So yay. So many of you are doing this class. It's awesome. Um, I am going to just show you really quickly for those that haven't seen what Ink, Paper, Scissors is for next month. It features Forever Love and it'll be these four cards. Um, we're planning a larger class again because these are such beautiful cards. Um, we're working on prepping all the materials already. And so if you haven't gotten signed up, um, all you need to do is just let me know you want to get signed up and we'll figure out what works best for sending money over for it. You'll get um, the gems. What people love about this one is you get the full gems, you get a full roll of ribbon, and then you get the quarter pack of designer paper and you get the four card kits and you have extra materials left over to make more by just adding some uh, cardstock. So that's the forever love class. Anybody can go ahead and get signed up for that. What is that little post-it note? Oh, I get it. Okay. So my little notes. So that's what's coming up for next month um, for ink, paper, scissors. If you get an ink, paper, scissors for me, this is what this class looks like. Yes, lots of new people in that year, right? This one's actually Gwen Simmons. So I will say that before I left for my trip, I tried to mail out what I could. And so if you did sign up for this class or the Garden Meadow class or a past class since last week, I haven't pulled anything yet and I haven't shipped anything. I have a little pile over on the counter. Mom's coming over at 1130 tomorrow and we're going to do shipping for about an hour. So we're going to try to get caught up. Um, so just so you know, like here, I've got Gwen Simmons so you guys can see what, what comes in this kit. Sherry Martin, you're correct. You are correct. I remember that you need one of these kits. See, this is, I remember seeing it and I did not get your name in my book. So yes, one of these, see, one is yours. I'm glad that <clears throat> that's what it's about. So what color cardstock is the Forever Love? Cheryl, we used a lot of pretty peacock um, and ivory. That is, for these four cards, it's pretty peacock is the base, um, uh, vanilla or ivory, vanilla, and then Moody Mauve, not Moody Mauve. Yeah, Moody Mauve is the other color. So Sherry Martin, thank you so much for telling me that I need to get your name in there. I do appreciate that. Um, and Connie Moore, you were on the list. But yes, I think you, how many took this class? So Laura, the, I was wondering if somebody was curious how many. So the number for this one, if you guys are remembering for my year end guessing game <laughs> for next, for the end of this year, we kitted up. 122 of this class and I have four open spots but again just like what happened with Sherry I know there are people out there that I have not written their name and I bet you any money all four of those spots are taken I said like I saved up one set of cards for myself and so I'm part of the 122 but 122 will be when all of these kits are accounted for so um 
Connie, yes. No, yes, Connie, you are correct. Connie, we um, messaged, um, I think I was driving and I didn't have my book out in front of me, but you are correct, Connie. You're also getting the ink, paper, scissors, I'm sorry, the, the painted lavender um, paper pumpkin. So you are correct. So that's perfect. Um, awesome. So I have your name on here. So I appreciate you guys and your patience while we got Connie and um, and Sherry figured out for, for that. So there's two of them. So now there's only three spots open. So um, yeah, so a big wow, I you guys... This class reminds me of the Daisy class. When we did the Daisy class, at that moment, that was the biggest ink, paper, scissors to date. And that was back in May. And now, I think you guys really like flowers. If I'm not, I mean, if I'm guessing, if you're like me, I love flowers too. So um, that's probably what it is. I know 122 of this class, you guys, I'm like, just blows my mind. Uh, so Gwen Simmons, I'm using yours as a sample here. When you get the class, you'll have your little uh, slip in here, which has the name of the class and the date. And you guys, we started having Kelly... Um, print these in here so that when we print them, they're nice and easy to read and has the date there. And then we're just handwriting your names in here. You'll get your four card kits and all these are vanilla based. And then you'll get your, your roll of the ribbon here. You'll get your gems. And we always put the gems in backwards. I mean, it would be so much prettier that you see the gems, but we put them in backwards so that they don't get caught on anything in shipping. And then you have your quarter pack of designer series paper. So that's what I have for you guys. And what we're going to do is I'm not going to cut guns. I'm going to grab a different one and I got to go get my ribbon real quick and my gems. So hang on. Ribbon and gems. All right. So I like to use up my opened stuff versus opening up a new pack. So I've got my gems and ribbon off to the side. And for this class, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the paper together as a group. And then you guys will have all of that done and then we'll go ahead and make the cards. The cards themselves are not overly complicated. So when you make your million, your set will be a flower set. <laughs> Laura, you're funny. So people have been asking me about that. I am getting close now. Uh, I'm about $5,000 away from 700,000. So uh, we kind of extrapolated out at like, at how I'm going and doing the number of classes I'm doing, we kind of guesstimated that by not next year, but by the following year in like middle of the year is when I might hit the million. And people were like, well, what are you going to have? For, like you're pick, making your stamp set. Um, I, I think you guys probably won't like it if um, I go with my thought, but it would be like a hodgepodge set stamp set of all the things that we like um including bees and um beer <laughs> and gardening and um um stamping and like making something pretty like there's so many random things that like and if there was a way for Stampin' Up! to put them together and to make a cool little stamp set that like was appealing to multiple people or like a, like a lot of people, like that would be awesome. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so like a flower in it, like with a bee and I like, a, I like butterflies too. So it, it's like a hodgepodge set is, and, and we love camping and outdoor like trees, right? So you guys, it will be the weirdest stamp set ever and nobody will buy it is probably what will happen is. <laughs> That's probably that's probably what will happen. So we got to come up with something more creative then, right? Oh, cats. Yes, you're right, Laura. And Patricia, you're right. There's got to be a cat in there too. So like all of those things in a nutshell would be awesome, but I doubt that that would be for to make for a good stamp set, right? It would be kind of dumb. <laughs> so, all right. So we have four different cards. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut the designer series paper. And I'm going to show you guys really quick the paper. Um, and I forgot to show you about this in the book actually too. So let me just take a minute and show you from the spring mini catalog, um, hodgepodge sentiments and yes, yes, <laughs> it would have, um, sunshine, love and big hugs in it, right? Like a sentiment that says that. Um, so you guys, we're at perennial lavenders on page 22 and it is, um, a super sweet is what I would call it or a mega sweet, meaning it's got two bundles in it. One's called perennial postage. The other's painted lavender. The painted lavender, you guys, it came back around the 22nd or 23rd, I think, of January. It's got the most prettiest purplicious um, gems ever. <laughs> Cats, bees, and beer. Yes, <laughs> exactly. 
We need to get it done by 2025. Um, we will. We definitely will. Um, I think if I would say we might, yeah, it'll 2024. And then by halfway through next year is where I would like June 30th of next year is my goal. I, I'm stating it out loud. <laughs> so, um, and then there's these purple accent butterflies too. Now we didn't use these purple accent butterflies in the designing of any of these cards because we didn't um, incorporate them into the goodie bag. We are saving the butterflies for the class that we're doing in April that is actually featuring the same products, but it's the sweet class in April. And everybody will be using the different butterflies in the sweet class. And so that's where you'll get to um, touch it, feel it, smell it for that product right there. So, <clears throat> so there's the two page spread of all the different. I love the perennial postage bundle um, with these dies and the different words in it. Very good. So just to show you too, what we did is we paired up we paired up this uh, gold leathery ribbon to go with these cards. And then the paper, just to share with you guys the paper in the DSP book. So if anybody's still looking for a DSP sampler, I still have some left of uh, the Spring Mini catalog, which has all of the, oh, we have books even open, or I mean the binder parts open. Uh, it has all the Spring Mini catalog and all the celebration pages. So I know Connie, not Connie, uh, Cindy, Nick, Colosi. <laughs> I had to think about how to spell your name and then said it. Um, she got a couple of the, the samplers here. Um, oh, Lane, we try. We try. We definitely work hard. I got that growing up on the farm. So peren perennial lavender is here. So it's really a, a really pretty set, especially if you're for Team Purple. You will absolutely love this paper. And I wanted to call out when we cut this paper for you, there's a sheet that looks like this, which has... It's like it's hard to work with that when you design for a class because you can't really um, make 12 cards that look identical because you have this whole section through here. So when we kitted up your uh, paper here, we flipped the paper around to make sure that you got, like for this one right here, you got one of the sections that looked like this and you got one of the sections that came um, from the side that has less. So that's how we made sure that you had like two that look like that. And then for that pattern right there, you have the one piece that's down at the bottom and you have another piece that's at the top. So you have one piece that will have a little bit more of the crumb cake up there and one that's gonna have more of the flowers. And so that's how we kind of divided. We like flipped the paper before we cut it so that everybody got the the right paper, that in our eyes, the right paper so that it wasn't doubling up. Um, what is the name of the ribbon is what Deanne Dawn asked. So you guys, I did miss a lot of comments way in the beginning. Um, so if you, anybody did ask questions and I didn't uh, answer it yet, um, you are more than welcome to, and you need it answered. You can reach out to me privately or you can always answer or ask it again. So this is the ribbon, Deanne, and it's called um, the gold. It says gold or gold. <laughs> it's like, like gold, the full gold Full gold leather trim, I think. All that says on here is gold, but it's like the faux leather trim. And it's actually, it's part of a different suite. Um, yes, Angelique, I would definitely agree with you. It's my favorite suite as well. Um, it is such pretty paper. That gold, that gold trim, it actually comes from somewhere else in here. And we married it up with it. Page 41 is, it go, it's actually part of the nature sweetness sweet, um, which we're doing for a sweet class, but we pulled this in to use it for this ink, paper, scissors, because you get the roll of ribbon. Um, for the forever love one for you guys, so next month, so that you know, you're going to get a roll of this ribbon, and you're going to get a roll, um, a pack of these gems. And then for the ink, paper, scissors in March, you're going to get the champagne rhinestones in that one, and then the white herringbone ribbon. And then for April, you're going to get the baker's twine, and then these rainbow adhesive back dots. So that's kind of like a little shout out in case you guys are wondering what you should order or not order. Um, you're going to be getting those in your ink, paper, scissors from me if you sign up for the class. So, oh, Debbie says she's using the product share ribbon first. Uh, yes. Yeah. Before you open the roll. Absolutely. Good call. Okay. So you guys, we're going to do a little cutting um, and then we're going to make the four cards. And again, two of them are fun folds in the sense that they... You get to showcase the designer paper. They're not crazy fun folds by any means. They're just, but I would say that they fold differently. All right, so let's just grab what we need for this one, which is, it is this piece right here. 
And then there is this other piece that looks like this, that one. So, and when you get this, you guys get a quarter pack of the paper. So you'll have two six by six sheets. Um, if you're local to us, sometimes we just cut the paper down the middle at six by 12 so that we don't have to keep cutting. Um, so with this one, this piece, this little purple piece is going to be two and five sixteenths wide by three and 13 sixteenths. So we're gonna do two and five sixteenths. So there is a pattern to me. It's going up and down like this. And so I want it to be two and 15, two and five sixteenths wide. So we're gonna do two and then five. So we're gonna cut like that. And then we're gonna, that's a scrap. You can use this for your envelope or anything else. And then three and 13 sixteenths. So we're gonna go to three and 13 sixteenths. Now this piece is what you're gonna use there for the top. And then what we need to do is cut this piece. This piece is six inches wide by five and an eighth tall. So it's already six inches this way. So we need five and an eighth tall. So we're gonna do over to five and an eighth. Now this is extra, but we also need to score it. And it's scored at two and an eighth. All right, so what you can do is I'm just trying to think here if we want to do, oh, I don't have a ruler here. Um, I wonder, oh, I took it with me to Florida. <laughs> it's in my box. I just want to see this really quick. This is three and seven eighths. So I originally said to score it at two and an eighth, which is perfect. If you are exactly at six inches, that's perfect. But if for any reason your paper is a hair shorter than six inches, mine is exactly six inches, which is perfect. If for any reason your paper is a hair shorter than six inches, I think I would suggest to you to cut, um, to score it at three and seven eighths because then at least the bottom panel will be the right width and then whatever folds this way, it doesn't matter if it's a hair shorter or not. So, um, so if you measure your paper and it's exactly six inches, which is mine, then go for it. Score it at um, two and an eighth and you wanna make sure when you score it, you're scoring two and an eighth here so when this folds over, you have the purple on this side. If you score it here, your fold is gonna be on this side. So you wanna be cognizant of that. Um, again, if you don't have your papers exactly six inches for some reason, what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure from this side, three and seven eighths and score it here. Ultimately, your score needs to be more on this side. So I'm gonna do two and an eighth here and make sure you score it, don't cut it. So I had two and an eighth which gave me three and seven eighths, which is the size that goes right here on this one, okay? So I'm cutting Angela's for her. I'm cutting somebody's for them. I'm not sure if it's Angela's or somebody else's, but um, I'm going to leave that there and not to confuse you, but I have my own that I'm gonna do really quick for my card that I'm making. So I'm pulling out a second one here, not to confuse you. It is my for my card that I'm gonna put together. So I have that off to the side here. Okay, so that's it for that one. All right, so let's set this off to the side. Let's look at this next one here. This card is set up very similar to the last one. Very, very similar. We need that green paper, which is this one. And it's really pretty. It's got that on the front. And then the other paper is this one right here, I believe. That guy. That's the one. These are the two we need. So this is the same setup. It's, I think it's six inch. Uh, let's see here. Okay. It's actually five and a half by five and an eighth. All right. So it's five and an eighth this way. So when you cut this, you could put this in at five and one eighth, because that's how wide it is. And then it's actually, this is a scrap. And then we have, again, it's five and a half. So we're gonna flip it this way, and we're gonna do five and a half. So we are cutting off a little bit. Hi, Gwen. And then we do need to score it. And the scoring is at three and seven eighths. So from this side to here, we're gonna score three, so it's the same, three and seven eighths. And then what happens is that will fold up like that. 
That's how we got that one. All right. So again, not to confuse you, but I have mine that I'm going to use for myself. And we said it was at three and seven eighths. Perfect. All right. So now I've got that one ready to go. There's one more piece on here. This one right here. We have this guy. Put that on the back. And this is three and 13 sixteenths wide by two and 13 sixteenths tall. So what we could do is let's cut two and 13 sixteenths tall. So this could be used for your envelope, which I think we should do. And then three and 13 sixteenths. I believe that's what I said. All right, sounds good, Gwen. We'll catch you on the replay. Three and 13 sixteenths. All right, so this is the piece that goes here. Perfect. All right, so that's that card. The next two are super, super duper simple. They are actually pretty much the same size. It's a uh, five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And when you get to your paper here, these two cards are similar, but they're the two different papers. Like this one is the one that gets used here. So this one has more of the crumb cake at the top. Hi, Kenzie. And then the one that looks like you have two pieces that look like they could work for this. Um, you could use this one if you wanted, or you could use this one, right? And I think what we did is we used this one. So I'll set that off to the side. And then this is extra for you gals to make more pretty things with it, okay? Lots of little leftovers. I think that you would also be able to use like this for an envelope flap. You could use this for an envelope flap and anything else too. Okay, so how do we wanna cut this? So I think I wanna capture, like I wanna leave that piece to be the top there. And I think I'm good with leaving this as the open spot here. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut it here and here. Now, if you prefer, you can chop this up how you want. Um, and you're with, are you, are you with always first than the, no, Laura, you have to look at T and W. I always put a tall and a wide. So you can't look by what, I don't, I don't put one versus the other. What you have to look in the tutorial is, it says five and an eighth W by five and a half T, right? So you know five and a half is the T, which is the tall, and the five and an eighth is the wide, right? So always look at the W and the T being referenced on the DSP. Each one has its reference. Um, God, I thought you were starting at 8.30 Eastern. Oh, so you might have seen my post that I was going to do class yesterday at 7.30 Central, and that got rescheduled to be at 6 p.m. Central tonight. So um, we're just getting started. We're actually just cutting paper first, and then we're going to go ahead and make cards. So you guys can figure out how you want this piece to go. You could even chop it and do like a section here and here, but ultimately you need it to be five and an eighth tall by three and seven eighths wide. So we're gonna do five and an eighth here and cut off some of this bo bottom part. You could even save this for your inside if you wanted. And then I do want this section here. So I'm gonna flip it this way and go to three and seven eighths. And then that's my piece that's gonna go right there, okay? All right, then the last one is this guy right here. How are you gonna cut this? So kind of like look at it. Oh man, Sherry and Debbie are saying there's no T's and W's on these. Oh man, okay. So I mentioned you guys that we've been transitioning a little bit with the writing of the tutorials. And I do try to proofread them and Karen proofreads them. And so um, I see you guys, I need to up, I'm just gonna make myself a note, up the T's and the W's on the PDF. So you guys, I will update them. The other thing Deb Norman found was that the meadow dies were not included on it. And that is where the butterflies come from. So the stamp set that we're using, we're using these two, which includes that die set and this die set, but the other one that we got pulled in here was the meadow dies, and that's where the little butterflies are from. So, all right, so you guys are all calling me out. It's all good. You guys, 
I made a note that they're not there. So what does that mean? That means I'll go through the PDF and I will add the W and the T where all the DSPs are. And then I'll add the meadow dies and you guys, I'll email you out. Anybody who took the class already, um, <clears throat> I'll resend the, the PDF to, to you guys so you have that. So for now, does anybody, like, if anybody need like this was five and an eighth wide. Like, so this was the five and an eighth wide, where on this case, this was the five and an eighth tall because one was a horizontal card and one was a vertical card. So um, hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, Haha, <laughs> they were older. I found some without, say, yeah, we didn't, okay, we started putting the T's and the W's about three quarters of a year ago. If I had to say, it hasn't been since the beginning. Um, I never used to list the T and the W, and then it was about the big, it was March or something of this last, somebody mentioned to me that um, it was hard to cut the designer paper because you didn't know what was the tall and what was the width. And so we started to try to put the T and the W on there. So I'll make sure that this one, I can't go back and update the past, but I can make sure that this current one is correct and has it added to it. So, um, so you guys got to take this corner piece and figure out how you want to cut the paper. And I believe it's going to be slightly different depending on which section you have here. Um, Melanie Foy just finished some chicken noodle soup. It sounds delicious. Um, so we got to cut a section from here. And so I'm going to take this bottom corner as my bottom and I am going to cut up and then part of it is going to get cut off at the top here. So um, five. So this also is five and an eighth tall by three and seven eighths wide. So I'm going to do the three and seven eighths here. This is a scrap. And then this is what I'm working with now. And now I'm going to cut the five and an eighth here. So it is going to cut off some of the pretty on the top. You don't have a choice really. It still leaves some at the top here, but that leaves the spot here yet for your sentiment, okay? So that's how I decided to cut for this one. <clears throat> You're gonna have some butterflies that are upside down. That's how it goes. <clears throat> I know sometimes people are not too keen on butterflies upside down, um, but this one has it. So um, I am also going to call out that this is for um, one of the gals who's got porch pickup, I cut their, there's a part. So I'm going to save that piece for them and then insert this back into their kits. <clears throat> but when I was showing you my designer paper pack here, I had none left of this pattern that besides cutting a whole piece. And I don't know about you guys, but I had this piece right here that was very pretty and already the right size. And so for me, when I'm personally going to make my sample cards with you guys tonight, I'm going to use this piece instead of that piece. Not to confuse you, but I didn't, and it's hard to cut into a new piece of paper, especially when you have a, a piece that was the, the size that you were looking for. So I think you guys can understand that feeling, right? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> it's paper, right? Cut, just cut it up, <laughs> says, says Donnie Nancy all the time. But um, okay, so now we have your card kits here. And they're really um, all the same, pretty much. So you have the very vanilla, and there's a lot of peacock, a lot of crumb cake, and a lot of purples going on. So what we're going to do is look here. This is a peacock one, and that, to me, is this one. So I'm just going to put... That's not that one. Hang on. That is... Must be... Hang on. I want to make sure I put them in the right envelope so that when we start cruising and making the cards together, um, it, it's, it's, it goes smoothly. All right, so this is this one. Okay, got that. That was this one. And this is what I would recommend too, is get these pieces in the right envelope. Okay, and then this one is your crumb cake one. So we'll just slip that guy in here, and then that should leave... This one is perfect. Okay, so I got the pieces of designer paper kind of into the kit where it needs to go. Um, it's just gonna help so that you can stay organized. Now the question is, which one? I wanna save that one for last though because I really like that one. I mean, they're, they're all pretty. Oh man, maybe that one for last. I don't know. We're gonna do this one first and then we're gonna go from there. You guys, they're all pretty because they're all purple, right? <laughs> um, it is hard to cut a new piece. Okay, so you guys are good. And yes, okay, so you guys can understand. Um, you didn't call my name, but my six years, 
but you sent, did send me the kit. You, really, Sherry? That's very interesting. So if you have the kit, then I'll... Eat. You're right. Because you know what? I did some things on the fly. At 2.30 in the morning, I did some things on the fly. I sent you, I probably mailed that to you the day, like that when I left and I didn't jot it in my book. So I'm glad that you have the kit because otherwise I would be probably like trying to figure out why I'm short a kit. <laughs> so thank you for confirming that, Sherry. I really appreciate that. Okay. There was one other person I did something on the fly. Oh, but it was, um, yeah, I'll have to think. It was the Be Mine class. It was um, Carol. I got to log Carol too. So you guys, I did some things to like just make it happen, but I didn't write them down. And that's what gets me in trouble is when I do that kind of stuff. And so, so Sherry Martin, I, I'm glad you told me that you have the kit. I really appreciate that. All right. Helps keep me, you guys help, you guys keep me on my A game. I can tell you that much. All right. So let's see what you guys have for pieces in here. So this is your inside piece and you will have a piece of this Lost Lagoon foliage. You'll have a piece of the like Highland Heather full like flowers, a little circle, and that's from Style of Shapes. This one is from the Perennial Postage, and then you have another one from Style of Shapes. And you'll have a piece of crumb cake here, and that gets folded in half. So, so Sherry, it's funny that you said that. You made me really think because um, <laughs> I knew that I did some things in the middle of the like night when I was trying to get things done and get them out before... Um, I left and I know that that's exactly what happened. I sent that out to you. So that goes like that. And then you guys will have this piece of crumb cake and a piece of gorgeous grape. And then you'll have your designer paper and you'll make sure that that folds back this way. And cutting, it's a paper hoarder's nightmare. Yes, cutting up paper is a hard thing to do, especially when you have stuff that's like the right size and waiting for you to use it. So this will go like the fold on the left and then you will have this piece of crumb cake and the fold will be on the right. And this will be your inside mat. And then this is what you're gonna use on the outside, all right? So let's grab our stamps though, so that we can get our little, <laughs> get it, our little big hug stamped. And <clears throat> on the inside, I don't even know what I did on the inside. I wonder if I stamped, oh yeah. Lo sending love and best wishes. That's beautiful. Very, very beautiful. All right, so let's grab big hugs and this one. So I'm sad. They are definitely not photopolymer stamps. They're going to make us work for it and try to stamp our best. So we're going to grab, you guys can do either one. You could do Lost Lagoon or, sorry, you could do um, Highland Heather or Gorgeous Grape. Or if you wanted to pull in Lost Lagoon or Espresso, you definitely could as well. But we've got here, I think we're going to do Highland Heather. Hi, Trisha. You're the random threads. Okay, you missed roll call. Um, You were on roll call, though. So, Trisha, you were definitely on roll call. I said your name. I had you out there. So, here's, I'm just going to see what this looks like. Perfect. If you want to, you can always stamp it on the back side first. See how you do. And then we'll stamp big hugs right there. Perfect. And then this one we will do on the vanilla. If you do make it crooked, you could always flip it over and do the back. Well, that's actually good. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do, the foliage comes in the other stamp. Now, they made the foliage here photopolymer, which is cool. And... And you can see it. Hi, Melody Miller coming in late, but better late than never. You are so true. All right. Uh, you and everybody else loving on the perennial lavender. I did a second strength on here just to give it a different color. Again, you guys, when you get your cards at home and you want to stamp them, you are allowed to stamp them however you want. They become your cards. You can change them a lot. You can change them a little. You can do what you want to them. So we're going to flip some of our papers over here and get the backs ready for glue. Let's see what we can all do here. Um, see how nervous we can make everybody with how much glue I'm putting down in front of me. So we got that one. 
we'll do this one too. And we're gonna do this one. You guys, I look at it that as long as I have the glue bottle open, I don't have to twist and open it so many times. All right, so this one will go down the gorgeous grape onto the crumb cake. Now, before you put glue on, it's always a good idea to, to hold the pieces up to each other in case you do wanna trim anything. You know, it's time to do it before you get glue on it, or it's easier to do it before you get glue on it. All right, so there's that. And now this little crumb cake piece, hi, Catherine Healy, goes right in here. And I'm just centering it top to bottom, and I'm seeing that there's like a nice flower line there that I'm gonna keep. I have a little bit more purple showing over here than I do designer paper over here, which is perfectly fine. And put our little sentiment on the inside and then our designer paper make sure you get your flowers going the right way on the outside okay that's what we got so far now how did we do this stuff um, what I would do whenever you use vellum it's good to use a non liquidy glue your fingers get all full of glue, Jenna. I try to not get fingers all over glue, but it, it, it happens to me sometimes too. So I'm gonna put some tear and tape on the back of my vellum circle. And I'm gonna put that, so I had two lines. You can see the vellum. I mean, you can see the tape there. I'm gonna put them here so that the, the circle, other circle kind of covers them up. I'm centering it left to right and top to bottom for the most part, I think that's what I'm doing. And then this one is going to get popped up with dimensionals. And look at this, we have a sheet here and we're going to trim it. Might as well use up our edges. Laura loves purple. You don't use it very much. You should, especially since it is your favorite color. Now, this is not centered left to right. It's centered top to bottom, but it's more to the left than it is to the right. And that's because we gotta save a little bit of room for the flowers over there. And then I did glue this flat onto the perennial postage die like this. Perfect, okay, cool, cool, cool. Then we need a little bit of this ribbon and not a lot, maybe probably about four inches, five inches if you wanna be nice to yourself. So I always say the more ribbon you give yourself, the, the nicer you are because easier to cut things but then there's more that you cut off and then what we're gonna use I think are some glue dots um, now this isn't down like completely permanent so we are I, I have the ability to like lift that up and put the some of the foliage underneath but we're gonna take and grab some glue dots and be strategic about where you put your glue dots when you make up your million dollar stamps can you request red rubber or photo polymer you know what that, I don't know the answer to that. If you guys watch any other million dollar stampers that do videos, that would definitely be a question for them. Uh, if you go into the book, it tells you um, the name of the person who has the million dollar set. If you watch anybody regularly and you, oh man, that moved on me, you guys, hang on. And you could ask them and let me know. <laughs> Cause honestly, um, I know that my, the majority of people that come to classes in person with me, they voice their concern and ex like express their desire to always want, um, my thing stuck here. Um, they want photopolymer for the majority of the people love photopolymer because you can see exactly where you're stamping. So this is going to slightly get, Oh, you know what? We're going to have one like that go so I put one kind of over the top there, and then we're gonna grab another couple glue dots, and we're gonna put them behind this flower section here, some of these. And then this kind of hangs out right over the top. I'm lining up these stems at the bottom. Now that I have them lined up, I'm gonna just gently pick this up, and I'm gonna wrap this gold faux leather trim around them at the same time. I'm actually tying it around them. So this makes it for like a little Humpty Hump knot, like it gives it a little bit of height. And after I have the knot done, I'm gonna actually take another glue dot and I'm gonna set that right underneath where that knot is. And that's gonna help hold that down. And then you can grab your ribbon scissors 
and trim your tails. The gold faux really goes well with this bundle, the suite of products. All right, so what I would Stella, we're already getting into 7.30, so you guys, I'm not gonna Stella right now um, on any of the cards, I don't think, but I would tell you, Stella, your flowers here. If this stem is a little too long for you, you can always take your scissors and you can trim up your stem here so it doesn't hang down so low. But I would definitely go through and Stella anything that you want to on here. If you wanted to, you could splatter a little um, ink on this little circle here too, or you could um, like put a little background stamp on it too to kind of make it look um, uh, worn a little bit. Uh, she, Angelique loves photopolymer, but rubber always stamps so crisp. You know what? That's exactly it. Like, it's like you get good and you get not so good. And like with one, you can see it and one stamps a little better. So, all right, you guys, we got one done. Um, the gems though. Where do you want to put you? Oh, the purplicious gems. Where do you want to put them? I would put one here. And then again, don't hesitate to press down on these so that they stay stuck to it. The words were really hard while I was trying to read Angelique's <laughs> message, you guys. <laughs> it was like, blah, blah. Like my mouth wasn't saying what I wanted it to say. But that's because um, my my brain is probably still moving a little faster than my mouth. <laughs> so, Or the opposite, however it works. All right. But we got a purplicious card done. Fun, fun. So when you have designer series paper that is pretty on both sides, that is a great way to allow people to see both sides of it. Cool. All right. Melody says, so pretty. And I want your million dollar stamp <laughs> set autograph. You know, absolutely, Laura. You can have it. <laughs> I will autograph it. Definitely. Hi, hunky. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Are you chasing something? All right. We got one done. Let's move on to we'll do this one this will be a nice one too all right so this one we pull this out we have a full card base here and it's in highland heather you can burnish your edge here with the bone folder we haven't done that for you yet and then you'll have your vanilla inside you'll have a peacock for your inside and we double mat these. We didn't double mat the last card because it was so small. So it wasn't quite worth it to do the double matting. And you've got a lot of layers going on anyways. <clears throat> this one, what you guys need to do, you definitely want to paper place it first. Um, check to make sure when you guys cut your designer paper, you can see enough of the peacock border. Because at this point, before you put glue on it, you could always trim off a hair off of two of the sides to see a little bit more of the peacock. I'm completely happy with how much peacock is showing on this, so I'm gonna let that be like that. This is the glimmer paper. It comes in purple, like a peach color, and the peacock. So we definitely pulled in the peacock with the perennial postage die for that. This also is one of the perennial postage dies. And then, you guys, <laughs> my die cutters did an amazing job. Anna helped out with a lot of this frilly stuff. And then Tammy and her mom helped out with a lot of the labels. But they cut all this stuff for you so that it's already in your kit, ready to go. And all these dies were from, look, can you imagine cutting out 122 of these like little vellum pieces? They are an amazing gals, These the, my helpers. They do a good job. So there's three here for the foliage. And what we need for this one is the espresso stamp set. And if you're wondering about this hello there, you don't see it in here. And that is because we pulled in a different stamp set called Blueberry something. Oh, you guys, look at, there's a hunkster. Look at, there's a hunky licious buddy. Oh yeah, look at you, happy camper. <laughs> He's like, he didn't get mom's nails for the last week. So um, he definitely appreciates my nails, you guys. <laughs> All right, so let me get my blueberries. <clears throat> oh, that's not it. <laughs> okay, I was wrong. That is not from there. Who has the PDF open? What did I, what did we use? Oh, does it say on the back here? Wait, wait, wait. What did we use? Softly sophisticated. Oh, man. Okay, one moment, please. So when we do classes like this, we don't always keep to the stamp set that 
for using if it's sentiments. We, we don't mind pulling in sentiments from anywhere else. So hello there. You call, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> You guys know my Adele reference, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do the hello there. Yeah, look at that handsome little man. He is, he is, and he's still there, you guys. He's just hanging out, keeping an eye on me. He's like, Mom, when are you gonna be done? Time for some pets and some love. All right, there's our hello there. You called. On the inside, we've got that, okay. All right, that's perfect. So that is, let's get this guy cleaned up. Oh, Brandon got to see the kitty cat. Yay. <laughs> oh, hunky, I bet you can't wait to play with Brandon. We'll have to figure out when Brandon can come over next and play with you guys. Brandon, he would have loved to have you over today. I didn't, I don't, what, what? I know between Angela and myself, our schedules have gotten a little bit um, Harry with when we could get Angela over here for stamping. <laughs> so the inside here, we've got this and you're going to need to pull in the little branchy thing here. So let's get that one. And I wonder if it's the big one. It is the bigger one, bigger ticker, <laughs> like bigger ticker. He's getting big. He sure is. He is hunky licious right now. Um, not quite as big as bigger ticker though. All right, let's grab a couple more blocks. Hey buddy. All right, so let's grab these two, and we're going to use, we're done with the brown. So let's grab, oh, of course, you guys, I had two blocks sitting right there. So you could either use Peacock, Second Strength, or I think you could just go straight for Lost Lagoon, whatever you want. I think we're going to do Gorgeous Grape, and that's what we've got going on. I think I'm going to go for the foliage part first. Make sure you ink that up good. And we're gonna put that right there. And then for the Lost Lagoon is a little bit lighter. So Lost Lagoon is like second strength peacock to me. And just because I don't wanna clean anything up, I'm just gonna set the paper underneath here. And we're just gonna stamp that kind of in the middle so it makes it look like the stem going up. Like that. Now, depending on what you do for sentiments, you can stamp another sentiment um, on the inside if you want to, totally up to you. So the one thing I did not get caught up on are my half a year's worth of cards to give out to people. <laughs> That's coming, you guys. Um, still on the horizon. And so I like to leave these cards open. You guys, I have two boxes of cards from the last six months that are going to have winners in the near future. And I like to keep these more versatile for people that they can use them for whatever they want. All right, so there's, the, I'm going to take this out so it's not glossy. All right, we do need to do a little bit of gluing. So let's flip this and flip this. And I think I tested that already, so that's good to go. All right, let's get glue happy. All right, so there's the inside mat. This is a really cool background. Like if you're looking for that kind of plaid look with like a soft crumb cake look, that's... This is the back, the pack piece is super cool for that. All right, so here's what we've got going on. Those two layers, and then we're gonna have these two layers. And that vanilla goes right on to the peacock. <clears throat> Before we glue, we're going to work on getting our faux leather trim down though. So let's cut about six inches here, and then we're gonna wrap a piece around, so maybe about four inches. And we're gonna do our tear and tape sandwich with this. We will get together, absolutely. We always do. Um, the plan for next week, you guys. So on Tuesday, we are kitting up the monthly class, ink, paper, scissors for next month, and let's just stamp. Now get this, you guys. Huh, I get to rip the calendar off. It's February 1st today. All right, <laughs> that felt really good. Um, so. Um, monthly class is the 8th, but because I was in Florida and it was a scramble and everything's going on, we decided to kit ink, paper, scissors, let's just stamp it monthly class all here on the 6th. And so just know we're going to, our goal is to mail everything and you may or may not have the monthly class in time for class. But for those that have, you always get multiple classes for me, just know you're saving the shipping by it, shipping together versus 
it's shipping separately. So hopefully, mostly the time, you guys, everybody's okay with that. So um, it just worked out good that we can ship those three classes together. And then the following week, we're going to be kidding up the other three classes, which are the Celebration Hoorah Rah and the Technique Club class with Rose and the Sweet class with the Trusty Tools. So you guys, I got, I went about, I don't know, what is that? A good inch and a quarter probably. And what we're going to do is make sure we get that straight across like this and then put that tear and tape right over the top of it and create the sandwich. Now, this leather trim is so thick. It really is. It's, it's a little thick. It's about the same height as a dimensional. So knowing that, I think what I'm going to do is instead of gluing this whole mat flat, I think for good measure, I'm just going to pop it up and call it a day. And I'll just put a bunch of these on the back like that. What are you staring at, buddy? He's just... He's staring at something. I have no idea, but he's intent on something on the wall. <laughs> I don't see it, but he sees it. So cats have a knack for spotting the smallest of something. <laughs> all right. So I've got all those picked off. And then we're going to just pop this right onto the card front like that. All right. And then what we can do is we can flip this over. My little guy there was moving. Okay, flip this over, put that on the inside. So that's ready to go. Oh, you guys, I was so looking forward to this class. <laughs> Ever since December, when we designed the cards, I've been looking forward to this class. And it's sad because it's already here now. <laughs> and then it's gonna be done. <laughs> All right. So what would I do? I would tie that on last. And then we're gonna do is grab a couple glue dots and we're gonna start building our layer here. Put a couple glue dots behind this peacock foliage piece. And that's gonna be coming up. So like it tucks underneath the faux leather trim and you're just gonna have it kind of angling up like that. And then the same with the purple piece here, you could put a couple glue dots and they can go kind of over the top of it, offset so that you still see the green. And then the vellum, we're going to put one of those as well, kind of at the base here. And that's going to get I'm just setting these on here. It's possible I can move them if I want to yet. And then the green one, because of how tall this trim is, you're gonna want to create a track for back here. So I'm gonna take that side piece here and create two pieces of dimensional. And I'm actually going to put them kind of like right on the front of the card like this, one above where the trim is and one below and then what I can do is set my my die cut shimmery piece over the top like this and that's pretty much centered all right and then this one will get glued and you know if you use glue with this it doesn't dry right away so I actually might consider using tear and tape a couple lines of tear and tape on here I think that will stick good and then you could always add a little bit extra if you want to make it really secure and bond good. You could always add there is uh, no T and no W on my measure. That is Beck, that is correct, Becky Gandolfo. <laughs> I think we we determined that we didn't include that on this file, and I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. Hi Ruth Nicholson, you have cut more. You have already cut to make more. Great, awesome. Then this one it slightly overhangs on the left side. And then it overhangs a little more on the right side, but that's flat here. And then what you can do is this little piece here and that flips up. Thanks Cindy for helping me answer that for Becky. I appreciate that. Um, now you've got where you can tie your little knot. And I've learned there's a certain way. If you tie it one way, the tails go one way. And if you tie it the other way, the tails go another way. So I'm gonna try to make sure I get it so the tails go the way I want them to, which in this case, I'm fine with them going like that. 
and that got tied around this piece. And then what you can do is just take your ribbon scissors and trim this off. It's really thick stuff, so you gotta be careful with that. Are you getting bored, Hunky? He's still like just sitting there, you guys. All right, let's get some gems on here and we'll call card number two done. And this one, I might use these little more magentia ones, the raspberry looking gems, because it brings out some of the raspberry in here. You know, only one man dares to give me raspberry. And who is that? Do you guys know what movie I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it was very influential in my growing up. My brother made us watch this movie all the time. <laughs> Spaceballs. <laughs> Spaceballs the movie. All right, so let's see. Do I need to add any more? Is this stuff kind of stuck in here? I feel like it's sticking good. So again, what you guys should do is Stella that up and call it good. But the paper makes it so pretty. Connie's loving them. Cindy says, lovely card. Yay. Okay, so we've got two done. Perfect, perfect. Um, so again, you guys, there's two videos that are going to be for this class. We're going to reference both of them. We're going to call one part one and the other part two. Part one was um, talking about my trip. If you, In case you were joining late, part one was talking about my trip and what I was up to, all the shenanigans I was running into and all the fun and all that good stuff. And all the work too. And then um, we showed off the MS cards that are coming up. And um, so you guys can watch that. It's about 15 minutes, I think. And then we rolled into, we figured out we had problems with storage. And we have part two now is where we're actually making the cards and going to town. So just in case you guys joined a little late. So I like the green glitter with the purple. Yes, it's because it's peacock. And peacock goes so well with... Um, the purple. It sure does. All right. Penny Powell, this is for you. Look at this. All this going in the garbage. Yay. All right. So you have Lost Lagoon for your base. It's all about the base. And then you'll have your gorgeous grape. Uh, and then pull in your designer. Now, again, you guys, I mentioned that I used my scrap, which doesn't look exactly like this. You will use, if you did, or you might use this one too, however, you might be, have a little different, but ultimately the card is gonna look the same. So we're gonna just put that in here, make sure that fits good, it does. And then you have a piece of vanilla with your inside, which is gorgeous, grape, All right? And then you'll have another one of these in the lighter purple. You'll have two of the foliages here in Peacock. You will have a butterfly that came from the meadow dyes and it did get cut out from the label. So we were strategic about this glimmer paper that we cut out this butterfly and the card next has this butterfly. So they got cut out of this piece and that's okay because it gets covered up with the piece of crumb cake. All right, and then this goes through the middle. So I do know what I'm seeing here is that this crumb cake, so you guys, we did kidding in two stages. The first kidding was 96 that went out and that were done already. And then Diane helped me cut for 22 more. And I do know that the kit that I'm using tonight is an extra one that Diane kit cut up. And I am seeing here, I'm, I'm, I see it right away, that the crumb cake that she cut is a little bit shorter than the crumb cake here. And it's two and a quarter is the height it should be. And if I look at this, she cut it at two. It's okay. Um, it's a quarter inch short. Um, Hunky is making sure you don't leave again. Yes, Karen, you're right. Um, so you guys, just so you know that if you are part of the 22 that got, well, now I was one of the 22. So if you're one of the other 21, you're, when, you're, when you're working on this, most of you are not going to have this issue. It was like Patsy Roberts and Gwen Simmons. Some of you girls that signed up later, like if you were like the last group or some in-person um, or some porch pickup people, just so you know, you're going to cut this in half and split it. And I'll show you how to do it. So if you're watching the video, you're like, oh, okay, I, I get it. It makes sense. Uh, so what we're doing here is sending love and best wishes. And um, that guy is going there. So you guys, it was, uh, Diane was a godsend to me while I was gone. She cut up for, it's the first time she's really 
<laughs> she's cut up for 22 more for this class for me. Um, so when I got home on Tuesday at like three o'clock from getting home from the airport, um, we kitted these up at like four o'clock and, uh, and that's how that rolled. So, um, so I really appreciated her cutting them up for me. I couldn't have done it otherwise. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to do peacock ink for this. So we're going to clean this one really quick. We will need to catch the replay. Bedtime. Sweet dreams to you as well, Nancy. Okay. So this is the peacock. Sending love and best wishes. I'm going to try it on the back first just to make sure. Whoa, a really juicy pad. Okay, so let's just see. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to drop this in here just like that. Perfect. Then on this, what I, I think I did is lost the boon. You could do... Uh, peacock second string and, and then the other option is lagoon so I think I'm just going to go for the lagoon and we're going to stamp that right here on the edge of glory like that okay that's it for stamping just needed some sentiments and some foliage on the inside so what you can do now is flip each of these over and we're going to glue these down. <laughs> yes, Angelique, you are so good. The, okay, so the glitter paper is so gorgeous. This is what Angelique said. You guys, if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, discount shopper, or hobbyist, regardless of how you call yourself or what you do with Stampin' Up!, if you are, if you have a demonstrator ID number, you that means you can purchase its pre-order right now for the new online exclusives. And I looked in the store today to see what's in there, and there's some new shimmery, glimmery paper. I don't remember exactly what it is, but they have a new specialty paper that is bedazzly. Let's just say that. It's pretty. So both of these can now get glued down as well. Like this. That is our inside. <laughs> Penny Powell's like, haha, ha, thanks, buddy. <laughs> You're very welcome. Just for you. Making sure I don't have my my mini glue dot tail hanging all over the place. Alright, so that will go right onto the card front like this. Boom. Alright. So whenever it comes to glitter paper, again, I don't always like to use glue. And we talked about my piece here, and you'll know if you put up your crumb cake piece to this. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit less than what it should be. Like you see a lot more purple on the top and the bottom. That means that you just got to cut this in half like this. And we're going to spread it. All right. So we're going to use the tear and tape though. And use that down here and right here that will stick really good to the glimmer paper. And I think what I'm going to do is just attach this near the bottom so that it's about the same distance on the left, the right, and the bottom like that. And then this one can go up there. And then that gap, that quarter inch that I was missing, it's okay because it's hidden or hiding behind where this label is going to go. And you'll never know the difference that it was missing the quarter inch. Okay, boom. So what do we need to do here though? We're going to attach, I think that this goes here about, we're gonna attach the tear and tape onto here. Now I'm considering, do I put it on the back side of here or do I put it onto here? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where this is gonna sit. <clears throat> I don't wanna cover up my butterflies. Again, you guys, if you used this paper over here, you've got an empty space there that's more crumb cake, that's where you're gonna put your label. But I don't want to cover up my top part there. So I think I'm actually going to go for like right about here for this. And that means I'm going to have my foliage things coming down here. If you need to pop anything out, now's your time if you want to. But I'll just leave that. And we're going to put these two kind of next to each other. Slightly overlapping. And so you've got those two like that. And then you're not done though. You need to add either another glue dot or some more tear and tape here. Um, yeah, so 
<clears throat> definitely, I didn't realize that it was a little too short. And that's, that was the perfect method to fixing it. <laughs> so we're going to grab the purple one here. And I'm going to find the spot where that needs to go. Kind of coming out the middle here. It could be a hair longer or something. But this little tail now is way too long. So I'm just going to snip that off. We don't need that back there. And then what we're going to do is pop this up with dimensionals. Shelly, yeah. Shelly, your kid is sitting right over here. I, I pulled it out. I have it waiting for you. And yours is going to get shipped out tomorrow. Mom is going to be here at 1130, and yours is one that's going out with it. So I'm going to wait to do that. And I'm going to, again, you guys, popping is always a personal preference. If you like your cards flatter, don't use as many dimensionals. And if you like them popped up, go to town. Load it up. Once you pop, you know you can't stop. All right. So we're going to set that right about here. Now that that's on, we can take this little guy. Now, if you wanted to, you could also splatter this with some purple ink and Stella pen to add a little bit of texture. You could bat stamp a little background stamp in crumb cake, second strength, to kind of make it so it's not so uh, vanilla. Okay, so something like that. And the butterfly, how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to bend it so that the wings go up and the body is going to get glued flat. So you could do glue dots, you could do liquid glue. I think what I'm going to do is a couple glue dots. Like right in the body area. And then stick that right up in that corner area. And that allows the wings to come up like that. And this one... It's just an overhand knot at the bottom. So maybe four inches of the faux leather trim. It's not tied all the way around it. It makes it look like it is, but all we did is we made an overhand knot and put a little glue dot right here at the base. And you know what? Before I put it down, I think just to be safe, I'm going to like kind of pick all this up and put another glue dot down there. And then this glue dot will rest right in it and trim the tails. Okay. Huh. Purple shimmer, glimmer, jimmers. <laughs> All right. Purple. Let's find a spot right here. We could put one and grab another one. We'll put it right there. And this pretty pinkish red raspberry one could go right there. All right, let's take a look. I think of the butterfly is the coolest part about it because I love having things look 3D. So by not putting adhesive, you could if you wanted put a little dimensional down there and that would hold the wing up. But I love the idea of having that the, the butterflies popped up like that. Sending love and best wishes. And then we've got on the inside, a little foliage, Stella it up. Make sure you get that Stella all over, whatever you want to Stella. If you wanted, you could also, you could put one of these little purple gems right in the middle. I know you don't see it very much until you get it close up, but you could add a couple little purple, because you guys have your whole thing of gems. You could put two gems right in the middle of the body of the, right there, you can kind of see them. They're, everything's so sparkly, so, but yeah. Add a couple gems to the body of the butterfly. Cool. Whew, you guys, we're working it out. We've got one left to go. Hunky decided to take a nap over by the chair there. So he let whatever go, go. Not interested in it anymore. Let's flip this that way. Perfect. Okay. Last one, but certainly not least, is this beautiful card. So it opens up very similar to the first one, but we just made it horizontal versus vertical. Thanks, Mitzi. All right. Let's see, make sure there's nothing in there. And again, you girls are welcome to use any of the designer paper that's left over to decorate those envelope flaps is so cool. Getting a card in an envelope that the envelope matches on the outside or stamp it, whatever you wanna do. All right. 
You should have your arm that's already folded. You guys will probably want to burnish it though. So take the bone folder and burnish it. It opens with the fold at the top like that. And then you have a piece of Highland Heather. And then you have your peacock. And then with this, the designer paper folds up like this. Let's burnish it. And make sure it fits in here good. It should. And if not, you can always trim it. <clears throat> then this is cut from the Countryside In dies. That's where you're going to stamp your sentiment on. You have your designer paper that goes on the top. You have the vanilla that goes on the inside. You have a circle here, which, just so you know, we did that whole cutting apart thing with this. So you will need to take your scissors and trim it in half like this, and we're spreading it. All right, so that's sitting there, and you have the other butterfly from the country, from the meadow dies to use. All right, so what's on the inside? That little guy. Okay, so we're gonna grab the vanilla, and we'll do gorgeous grape. And it was the flower, of course I have it off, so let's clean this one. Oh, you know what, I have another block right here. So here we go, I'll just use another block. I think I just got a little bit of purplishness right in the bottom corner here. Just like that. Cool. If you want to, you could also do the branch thing. I don't think I did. It's a different flower. Hang on. <clears throat> it's actually this flower right there. So in case you're wondering, there's lots of different flowers in here. There's uh, four different ones here that you could stamp. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and use the other one. So just so you guys can see what it looks like. How's that sound? And then we'll do it on the back. All right, let's get that off of here. Flip this on here. Flip that over. Put that like that's how I did that. All right, I'll go. I'm good with that. This one says, I can't thank you enough. And it is stamped in the Peacock. And that must come from the stamp set. There it is. So let's grab that. Must be this one. And I think that's not cleaned yet. <laughs> so let's just clean that really quick. In case you guys don't see how stamps and the blocks, I mean, you can just get yourself a few blocks and then you exchange out the stamps and the blocks so you don't have to have a block for every stamp. That's how it works. Um, I'm going to practice on here first. And then I'm going to practice on the back of this. See how it works. Honey, I see you, girlfriend. What are you up to? What are you doing? Okay, I did that on the back. I want to move it up a hair. Honey, where's your mousey? Let's go right there. Let's see if that's better. Okay, I'm good with that. I think that's it for the stamping. And now, oh, 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 it's not it. It's not it. It's not it. There's this thing right here. <laughs> that stamp. There's a whole little collection of like little butterflies, it looks like. Hard to tell, but... That is actually, we stamped it. It's very hard to see, but you can kind of see there's some dark spots around the edge here. We use that. It's in the PDF tutorial. What are you, girl? What is it called? Um, Jolene said it has a name. When you have an entourage of butterflies. <laughs> um, it's like a collection of butterflies. What is it called? It's, she put a little um, knowledge in the PDF <laughs> in case you guys didn't know. So definitely don't want to do first strength. Second strength or third? I think I'm going to go with some second and some third. And what I'm going to do is stamp second and then third. Stamp off, second, third. Stamp off. It's like wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. All right. So I'll show you close up. I ended up with some darker and some lighter, and it's okay. It just created a little bit of texture behind. So I'm gonna stamp off and do a third strength, kind of right in the middle. 
so that it looks like I didn't forget the middle area. So that creates just like a little baby buffer of color behind. Perfect. All right, let's see what we got here. We're going to use some tear and tape and a kaleidoscope. Thank you, Debbie Gast. That is exactly it. Now that you say that, that is exact. She asked if I knew that. And I'm like, nope, I didn't. But you know what? I think like, oh, trivia. She's like, let's put some trivia in. See if anybody, <laughs> I thought it was cute. I'm like, I, I, I was good with it. <laughs> so I just put a little tear and tape on the top and the bottom. And we're going to just find where we think it needs to go. Maybe like that. And like that. So basically we expanded our circle. Did you see that? It grew by a quarter of an inch. So we just made the circle bigger. We also need to, before we get glue happy, we need to get our ribbon down. So we're going to put the two pieces down and two more pieces waiting in the wings. And we do this because ribbon has a tendency of coming out from underneath and losing its stick, depending on what you use for your adhesive. So I definitely like to use the tear and tape, which is a more permanent in nature adhesive. And we're going to be putting two right next to each other. So find where the middle is more or less. And then you're gonna flip that tail over and bring this one straight over. Try not to curl your paper or bend your paper. And there's that one. Oh, thanks, Deb Norman. Yes, a kaleidoscope of butterflies. Hi, Lisa, left friend boys. Thanks for joining us. So I put that one right next to it. And then we're going to... So between the two of them, they should be centered pretty nicely, if possible. All right. But like the other one, this leathery stuff is kind of tall. And so what we're going to do is put dimensionals behind here to kind of pop it up like that and go close so this paper the designer paper is a little thinner honey I see you do you guys want to see honey hey baby girl come here you want to show everybody your pretty face oh got her I got her See, there's our little honey. She, yep. Mom, I didn't want to see everybody. I wanted just to play mousy. <laughs> yes, honey. All right, you guys. <laughs> the, the pets do talk. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do one there. Because it's designer series paper, we are going to put multiple. Otherwise, the paper is going to be like, kind of flimsy. So we're giving it some support, like an underwire bra. How's that sound? Okay. Well, this now can go... Make sure your flowers are going the right way. Now this can go on to here, something like this. Let's just see if that comes out good. Okay, good enough for me. And now I just realized that, um, so what I did, I actually glued the circle flat and I popped this up, but what'll work out okay is we will put our high, whoa, honey. <laughs> Thanks a lot, girlfriend. What we're gonna do is put our dimensionals everywhere but where the, the, the trim is here, the ribbon is. And then in this case, the circle is gonna be on top. And here I, I made it like it was underneath, which is okay, no worries. Well, you know how you could do that? Hi, Sandy Zidoon. She has gotten bigger. Hi, Mary Carls. All right. Do you see what I did, you guys? You can rip things apart, it's okay. You can be a card surgeon. Let's take these, and what we're gonna do is instead of using tear and tape here, you could have used the dimensionals, which works out perfectly fine, and then attached these with the dimensionals. Same process, kind of eyeball it, like that. And now you've got that raised up and so when you put this here, this actually, the green, because you have that channel here, that ribbon will actually nestle right in between that and your perp or your peacock circle will be flat and then this will be popped up. 
Okay, so we have just a few dimensionals left here. Let's see if we can make this work and get four of them here. So what we're gonna do is put the dimensionals right along the edge of this crumb cake piece, like that. You guys, we use the Pushita dimensionals. Happy dance. Boom, done. And then liquid glue. We'll go where the circle is, and then you need some liquid glue on that. And again, the circle should stick, like this section here should straddle where the, um, the ribbon is. Like that, and then this piece goes on the inside. Honey, you're gonna fall, girlfriend. All right, and then over here, flip this and glue all of this. I'm keeping an eye on her. Make sure she's not jumping over this way. And this one, and this one. Perfect. All right, so let's do this one first. On here. Good. And then this one, make sure your fold stays at the bottom. Thanks, Sandy. It was a good vacation, and it's good to be back. So if you catch this video at the beginning and the one that I did right before this one that was like about 15 minutes long, um, you'll catch everything about how, how everything went. <laughs> And then this will be the same thing where we're gonna put this right in here. Then we're gonna shut that. Make sure it's centered really good, left to right, top to bottom. Something like. So it's liquid glue, so you've got a little, little wiggle room time. All right, perfect. So that's like that. Last, we have as a butterfly. Oh man, oh, we can use one of these guys. So I'm gonna put a little black dimensional up at its wing. And then we're gonna put a little glue dot by its body. You guys hear that noise? That she's trying to get into a box. <laughs> the butterfly goes over there. And then I think we're done with the dimensionals. Let's put a couple of the darker ones here. So we're gonna put a big and a small on the side. And then let's put a big one up here. Now, you do have a whole sheet of these. If you guys are wanting to put more, you definitely could. You could easily add two more to the front of this card and it would juice it up even more. So there's that, and there's that. So yay! And what's really cool is the pattern continues. Um, this follows down and it keeps it like that it's all continuous, like, the, like vertically the right way. I love that you use enough dimensional. So yeah, right, Mitzi. So we call that a saggy middle syndrome. If you don't put enough dimensionals in the middle here, the middle will sag down. And then we have like a saggy middle and nobody likes the saggy middle, right? <laughs> um, Sandy, you're right. The kittens did miss me. They are, they're, they're around. So I just heard Tyler's truck pull in the driveway. So they're excited because dad's home. So, and we did good, you guys. We got it's only 10 after 8. We got all four of our cards done. We did a lot of chitty chatty at the beginning. And we're going to do some drawings now for some door prizes. So let's just bring all the cards back here. Hi, Sharon Leon. So you guys, I know a lot of you joined. And I didn't get to say hi to everybody um, individually. Because everybody was rolling in at the same time. It was crazy. Um, oh, your husband wants to see the fur babies. Uh, they ran to the door, actually. Let's just see here. We're going to put these three like this. And we'll put that one like this. You guys, you love what Kelly made for me? She made my new little sign here. It's so cool. All right, so you guys can tell me what your favorite is, if you have a favorite. I'm going to see where the kittens are. And then we're going to get our drawing stuff ready so that we can um, do our drawing. All right, let's get that done. And get these clean really quick. So you guys, we didn't pull in... We didn't actually pull in the blueberry bunches. I thought we did, but we really only pulled in softly sophisticated for some words. It, we pulled the blueberry bunches into the Let's Just Stamp class. I think that's where I got that from in my head. So let me just clean these guys. So can't wait to make them. Oh, Annette, the awesome, awesome. Your, your class is sitting right on the counter, getting to collect a little pile for you. All right, so got that all clean. And I'm going to go grab 
the book here really quick. Let's see where the kittens are. Mm, they are not to be seen here. I have the garage door open to like the mud room or like the shisha door to the, um, oh, bigger tiggers here. Hang on. We can show you bigger tigger. See if you guys can see bigger Tigger here. All right. So, did you see that white thing on his back right there? That right there, that white speckle? That is actually a dimensional back. And I left it on there because he was sleeping with that on his back. And so, <laughs> they go everywhere. <laughs> they stick to his fur. Uh, so, perfect. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. So, that's what we have for the cards for you girls. You like them all. Good, good, good. Okay, let me get my book and see. Oh, it fell on the floor. When Honey jumped up, it fell on the floor. All right. So let's grab the yellow book and see once what we have here. All right. So I did get Connie and I got Sherry Martin's name down, which is perfect. So I have um, 102 102 people that we're going to include in the drawing and we're going to go to random number generator. Um, when people do in-person class, like Barb is in person and I had, um, Diane did a whole bunch of in-person. She does her own thing for drawings and stuff for people, but I have 102 people and we're going to click the word. Let's make sure I didn't miss anybody because it goes over to 86, 87 down to 102. And then we pop back up here. Okay. So that's perfect. 102 is what we're going to put in here. I'm going to click the word generate and 85. 85. Who is number 85 is Sherry Stewart. Awesome. Sherry Stewart, you are the winner of a door prize. The next class package or <laughs> the one after that. As soon as I get the prizes um, pulled out, then they go into the next package. And we're going to click again. 36 is over here. Feline Mays. Yay, Feline. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And you know what? Let's do one more just because we had so many people that took this class. 42. 42 is Doral Hoffaker. Yay. Awesome. So we had Doral, we have Sherry, and we have Feline. All you girls won a prize for class tonight. All right? Just for signing up for class. Perfect. Okay. Then I have here my sheet. So last week for Paper Pumpkin, we had 23 people. I included the three gals, um, Connie and Cheryl and Laura Sullivan. You were the last ones to get my like ad hoc boxes that I have there. So let's include all of you. So we do 23, not 123. We'll do 23 and click the word generate. Number nine is Linnea Bertram. Yay, Linnea is my sister-in-law. She gets the pumpkin. Um, all right, then... We have just, I did announce this at a past class. I don't remember which one it was, but Barbara Rudolph was the winner of the December monthly creative challenge. And Linda Hunt was the winner of the class card challenge for December. All right, so we had done that. So I just wanted to re-announce that. We had four people who did the January monthly class and the winner of the door prize is number two, Tracy Solar. Yay, Tracy. We had three people for the class card challenge for January. And I'm going to click generate. Number two is Deb Norman. Yay, Deb. Okay. So the January monthly creative challenge, Tracy, class card challenge is Deb. So you guys, we needed to catch up on the December mystery card. I had 27 people that I logged that participated. And out of that, we'll pick a winner. It's, it went from two to three. I saw it. It was two and it went to three. Three is Gwen Simmons. So congratulations to Gwen Simmons. Yay. Lots more people. We did 39 people in January. So we're going to do two winners for January. So we're going to put in here 39. I'm going to click generate. Number 20 is Jenny Knutson. And then we're going to pick one more winner. Number 31 is Laura Ann. So I wondered if Laura Ann won who it is. Uh, so if you're Laura Ann, I don't know what your last name is off the top of my head. I, can, I couldn't think of when I wrote your name. I didn't know if I knew if it's Laura Wood or if it's uh, a different Laura. I'm trying to remember if Laura Ann is Laura Wood. You guys, I try. 
I don't memorize people, all people's Facebook names, like your profile name. If it's not your name, I don't know necessarily, it, you know what I mean? So Laura Ann, I'll have to reach out to you and let you know that you won so I can make sure I get your address. So the January Share, Create, Inspire class, there were six people that shared their cards in that um, event. And we're going to click the word generate. Number four is Anna Rebidu. Yay, Anna. Awesome, awesome. All right, so for December, we had 19 people that submitted their uh, post. They said on the post that they shared my showcase for the month of, it would have been December's showcase. And so we had 19 people. So this person has the option of picking a half-off bundle from my stash. And the winner is number 17, which is Ann Miller. So um, if Ann pick something great. It's always an option. If they want it, they can take it. If they don't, then I'll pick somebody else from the list. So congratulations to Anne. That was December's. Now Lisa LaFramboise won November and we just, I have her Earth and Elegance sitting here. And then now I have January VIPs. There was 14 people. So we'll change this to 14 and we'll click the word generate. And number two is Deb Norman. All right. So Deb, you would also be the winner of a half off um, item. I'm going to check with Ann Miller first to see what she takes, and then I would message you to let you know what I have left, and then you have the option of, from my pile of maybe like 10 to 12 different bundles, you can pick one. Now, the December top fans, the prizes, I have already mentioned this in a past live, but just to remind people, because I'm kind of like encompassing December and January here, Cindy Bassett, Susan Warmly, and Donna Winner all will have a prize for being a top fan. Now, t uh, Facebook awards you a top fan gem if you like, comment, and share a lot in Facebook. And then what I do is ra I randomly pick winners um, to have a more winners throughout the month. And so those were the three that were f picked from December. Now, from January, we have Paula Rice, Karen Cotton, and Kate Race. So those three gals will win prizes for the, just the January top fan. I appreciate every one of you that likes, comments, and shares on my Facebook page. When you do that, it brings more exposure to the amazing stuff that we're doing in this online community, which is creating beautiful cards and inspiring you to also create whatever you want and share it with others, right? It's called Share, Create, Inspire. So, um, or Create, Share, Inspire, however you want to look at it. Um, so, Yes, lots of winners there. So we had three people that we had from the, the class and then all of the people listed here. Um, I know you guys, for some of you that have been with me for a while now, I used to do a top winner, or, um, a winner's post every week and it got to be too much for me to do that weekly. <laughs> so I think with the new year, I'm going to, I'm going to try not to like, I'm going to let it go <laughs> from like September because I didn't do it from like September, October, November on, but this is a lot of December and then January. I think I'm going to do that winner's post and not try to go back. It's overwhelming to think, oh, I, like the post would be like this long to list everybody from September, October, November. Um, and I've been handing out the prizes. I just haven't been putting the post out there. So I'm going to try to get back into that routine. Uh, you guys, it's hard when there's a lot going on. You guys know the drill. There's a lot that's going on and it's hard to keep it all the, the balls juggling in the air. So I'll try to get that winner's post out there so you guys can see the winners. Um, because this is a lot of December and January. The one thing I'll go back and look to see who the Share, Create, Inspire was from December and get that in there. So we have all of December and January. So that leaves the board here and it's full. And I already have board number seven started. This is board number six. I already have about four or five names for board number seven, which is awesome. Hi, Maria Gilbertson. So this one's a little bit different. This one is when you place a $50 order with me, you get your name on one of the squares. If you do $100, you get two squares. If you do three, you get three squares and so on. You do not have to be present to win. Uh, you don't have to tell me your number. I am watching my orders and I like while I was away, I highlight your name to a certain color until I put your name on the board and now your name is green um, once I put it on so I know who needs to get added yet. Um, and so what I do here is I have every number in here, one through 25. I randomly pick a number from pulling one from the bag and then that person wins a $25 gift certificate with me off of product from Stampin' Up. So like Stampin' Up product. Um, it's not, it's never been used for classes. It's, it's for getting goodies from Stampin' Up. Um, and so when I close workshops, I get host rewards and I use my roast. I, I like to forward on host rewards to you guys. And so I do it by giving away um, uh, the $25 gift certificate towards product. So 
I know we've had like Shirley Malarkey is one, Debbie Gass is one, Tracy Solar is one. Um, there's been three, two more. I, Elaine Rebeck, I think you won, I think the last one. So Elaine always wins. <laughs> you guys, her name always gets picked. So, or her number. So you guys, have, we're going to do drum roll for this one though. Brrr, yay. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing the drum roll, roll by myself, but I know you guys are doing it at home too. <laughs> All right. So here's our winner, winner chicken dinner number is 23. Okay. Now that we know the number, we're going to go grab the board and see who it is. And it is a Miss Mary Vogel. So I got Mary Vogel here, you guys. So you guys can see all your names that are up here. So if you place, oh, it's gotta go this way. If you've placed an order recently, I have got your name up here. There are orders from February, haven't made it up here, your name. So if you ordered since February 1st, but I have everybody through January 31st has gotten their name on one of the board, like up to six. So Mary Vogel, yay, um, congratulations. Um, I was very excited also. Um, you were the one who reached out to me that missed putting your host code on and you were able to get in touch with Stampin' Up and you added the host code without me having to do it and I so appreciate that. Um, you guys, that's one of the, the rules or drills with um, getting free classes with me is if you put the host code on yourself, you get to pick um, a future class or one that you want from the past that's available. And if you forget, I still like to honor it, but then I pick one of my past classes that I have a plethora of left and I, I get to do the picking. Um, um, so that's how that works. So I'm um, Mary Vogel. You were um, awesome that you were able to get Stampin' Up to add that host code. I greatly appreciate it. You guys, there's a spot to put the host code on the order before you check out. And if it doesn't say that the host code is on the workshop, I encourage you to call me. Um, if you're having problems, I'll try to help you if I'm available or I'll call you back when I am. Um, we had that happen today. So um, I was able to help somebody get their host code and make sure that they got it. I think it was Connie Moore. Um, she called me today about the code and we got it on. So it's it's there. It's just making sure you see that it's there on there before you submit the order to Stampin' Up. So good. Okay. Awesome. We did good, you guys. I know that this took a little bit, but I have it always does in the beginning, especially when we need to restart the video. So I appreciate everybody's patience in the beginning. And I'm glad we caught that right away. Um, I did delete out every single video that is in my tablet. So that shouldn't happen for a long time. And you know what I need to do? I'm on my calendar. I'm going to set a little note to do in two or three months. Um, yep, it was you, Connie. I remembered that. <laughs> um, I know it was only a little bit ago, but it feels like like 9 a.m. this morning was like three days ago already. Um, so um, I need to set a note to remind myself in like three or four months to clear out the videos so that this doesn't happen again. But I will go back into the video here um, from um, today and I'll mark one part one and I'll mark one part two. And I will, in the PDF tutorial, I'll link um, and add both videos. Instead of having Kelly take time to merge the videos together, she doesn't have the time to do that these days. I'll just list both videos so you guys have that. So Mary Vogel from Toledo. It It is, her her last name is Vogel, V-O-G-E-L, not A-L. So Laura Sullivan, it may very well be a different Mary. Mine is definitely, the one on here is an E-L, not A-L. So um, unless you have yours spelt wrong, um, it could be, but it, she's an E-L. So, okay. Woo, you guys, we did it. Awesome sauce. So, um, this girl is going to button things up and get eight hours of sleep tonight in my own bed. I am so excited. <laughs> I told Tyler two days ago that is what I was looking forward to the most was sleeping in my own bed with the kittens. So, all right. So, Mary Vogel, I'm writing you down for celebration board number six. Awesome. So, all right, you guys. Um, again, if you took this class and I didn't have your name on the list, I am, you are more than welcome to get in touch with me right away. Mom and I are going to be doing shipping between like 1130 and 1230 tomorrow. And I would love to get your kit shipped out to you. If you're okay holding the kit or this class until next Tuesday and saving some shipping because you're going to be getting like the monthly class or let's just stamp. I don't mind at this point letting the kit sit on the counter for three or some more days like over the weekend and until Tuesday. Um, I'm completely fine with that because it's sitting there now anyways. So, um, but anybody else, I'll get your stuff shipped out tomorrow. That is definitely the plan. So, um, unless we've already talked and I'm holding it. So, all right, you guys, I'm so happy that you had a great class with me. I really enjoyed it. I did look forward to this one. I felt so bad when I couldn't do this class last night with you. I thought about it from like the time the class started, it was at six. 
to 6 30 I was driving and Tyler was kind of like in the passenger side like like with his feet um pressed down like with brakes and his uh, like um he had his like he doesn't like when I drive so much because I do like the start, stop, start, stop, I guess. Uh, uh, and I make him sick. And so I know from six to six 30, that's what I was doing to him. <laughs> but I was thinking about you guys and that we were missing class. <laughs> so, um, but it, I'm okay with it. You know, that is the great thing about these kind of online classes is even if you can't catch it live with me, you guys can catch the replay whenever it is there and convenient for you. And you just pull out the kit. Just always keep that yellow piece of paper in with the kit. So you know the day, so you can always refer back to that in my YouTube channel or in my events calendar that you can easily find the video. So, all right, you guys, I had fun with you as well. And so it was fun for me. Um, I definitely was awake. You guys, I hope you know that I was not like, this was not, I was not like dreaming this. This all happened and I thoroughly enjoyed the class with you guys. I cannot wait for Garden Meadow. Um, tomorrow afternoon, Diane and I are going to be designing Let's Just Stamp for actually for March, which is awesome. It's the blueberry bushel class. And then at five o'clock, I'll be live with you guys for the garden meadow class, the stamp -a stack. Um, if you still would like to get the garden meadow stamp -a stack, there is availability. Um, I, I have the stuff ready to kit up more. I just haven't done it because I was waiting to see if where we were at with numbers. So, but I definitely have up to like eight more for this class ready to go um, for next week in case you want to get that mail to you yet too. Um, I will, Linda Hunt, definitely going to get some uh, shower and rest. <laughs> that is the plan. So, and then some kitten time. <laughs> All right. Good night to everybody too. Lots of sunshine, love and big hugs to you. We will see you tomorrow at five central standard time. Love you a long time. I'll come to 10 just in case it ends early. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 